Hello and welcome to Excel at English and to this guided annotation of the text French Milk which is a text on the AQA A-level Language and Literature Paris Anthology. Um, let's start with the context of this text. Uh, Lucy Nisley, um, her website biography uh, describes her as a critically acclaimed and award-winning comic creator uh, who specialises in personal confessional graphic novels and travelogues. And there's some inf uh, useful information for us there in terms of a personal, confessional um, and travelogue are all um, meaningfully applied to the text that we are looking at, French Milk. French Milk was Nisley's uh, breakthrough work in 2006. I think it was published in 2008, but it recalls uh, a, tri a trip where she um, stayed with her mother in Paris in 2006, and she wrote what is effectively a graphic art diary, which also has um, aspects of photo journal, and that is French Milk, the text that we are studying an extract from. Um, with regard to context, it's useful to think of the context of the comic tradition in France and Belgium. And this is known as, I think my pronunciation, um, let's see if I can get it right, Bandesine. Bandesine is usually abbreviated to BD. And this is the name for the French and Belgian comic tradition, which is very strong. They are a very popular form of literature in the French-speaking world. Uh, you may know this if you have ever read Tintin, Asterisks, Asterisk, Asterix, Asterix, or Lucky Luke. Um, there are others as well, I'm sure. Uh, there's a Parisian stall there, um, an image of a stall absolutely dedicated to uh, Bandesine. Uh, there are also, as we find out when we read uh, French Milk, uh, comic um, book stores that are dedicated to this art form. Um, here's an extract from Tintin. It's useful because uh, Tintin is directly referenced in the text and nicely obviously takes inspiration from Tintin. Very useful to look at a page. So pause right here and just ask yourself, um, how does the narrative develop on this one page of Tintin? Just for context, Tintin is um, staying with a Native American Indian tribe when he discovers oil. Uh, this is from Tintin in America. Very quickly, the capitalists move in. Have a look at the narrative devices used in this text uh, to uh, present the narrative and the way things develop. A few relevant features here. Um, one is the way that the um, speech representation drives the narrative. Um, and you can see from the um, speech bubbles that this is a sort of a speech driven narrative. There are captions and they play this particular function of a kind of a, a sequence or a montage, if you like, of an hour later, two hours later, three hours later, the next morning, um, which helps to guide the reader, I guess, through this passage of time. There are such things as emanata, which I didn't know what these were until I started researching this, but uh, emanata are these, um, these little... Uh, sort of almost uh, punctuation marks that appear around the head of characters when they're in some kind of heightened state. Um, that could be um, surprise or shock, um, but whatever it is that they're experiencing, this emanata uh, kind of, I suppose, focusing the, um, focusing the response to whatever's in the panel on, uh, on a particular character. Um, as we've discussed there, captions, a combination of caption and dialogue, but also it's worth thinking about the sequence of panels and the way that this, the panels represent a kind of discourse structure um, guiding the reader through the narration. Um, back to French Milk, uh, if we consider the genre, the mode and the audience of this text, it's uh, this text is very flexible in the way that it combines it's highly um, kind of creative and original in combining aspects of several different genres. It is part diary, it is part photo journal, it is a travelogue, it is an example of graphic nonfiction, it is somewhat autobiographical. Um, I think there's even a shopping list in there in the extract that we study. So it's a highly flexible combination of different genres, although I would say that a diary is, um, I guess, its, its main form. With regard to mode, uh, if you watched the previous lesson introdu introducing mode, then you'll understand what this means, and you'll know that the text combines linguistic and visual modes. 
Um, of course, the language is written in this text, um, but there are heavily aspects of spoken mode and lots of presentation of dialogue, so we can look at the difference between narration and spoken language within the text. Likewise, the visual mode has different methods. There are comic style panels, there are broader sketches that might perhaps pass for artistic sketches. There are also photographs, or at least in our extract, there's there's one uh, example of a photograph. Um, finally, uh, for this slide, audience. I think this is a text that is directed towards young adult readers. Um, I think these are readers who might relate to Nisley's account and her perspective. Um, I think the um, the angle of kind of young romance is particularly directed at uh, young adult readers. But there's also a specialist readership within the world of comic art. Nisley is clearly um, writing for people within her own uh, comic community, uh, a sort of a specialised world of um, enthusiasts who are excited by comic art and the way that this is represented in A Trip to Paris. We know that the question for AQA, um, for the AQA um, Remembered Places, is a question that's heavily focused around representations, or that we need to focus our responses around representations within the text. So, a summary of representations in this text the text represents Paris as a place of culture and literature, um, and those references take in Tintin, uh, Hemingway, literary references, and the Parisian cinema. So it's a cultural, a culturally rich representation of Paris. There's also the focus on food, which is shared with several other texts in Paris. There are descriptions of restaurants, street food, and shopping experiences. So Nisley is representing different aspects of Paris. Her representation of Paris has this, um, this uh, aura of intimacy. Um, and she acknowledges this a romantic Parisian cliche. We have her walking with her mother along the river and having experiencing the church bells. We have several kind of romantic um, Parisian images, uh, and she acknowledges this um, this uh, representation, this common cliched representation of Paris as a place of romance. She also talks about, or she also identifies and represents tourist destinations, but the representation of these is somewhat mixed. She's passionate about some of these venues, um, but she's also negative about the crowds, and in um, that's uh, another representation that, sh that this text has in common with some other texts in the anthology. Um, Paris isn't the only focus of this text, though Nisley herself is also a central focus of the text uh, in accordance with this autobiographical uh, aspect to it. Um, so her self-representation and representation of her personal relationships are a really significant focus. This is represented through her own passion for things like art, literature and food. She's self-representing, but she also self-represents through her account of her romance with her boyfriend. Uh, with her boyfriend, sorry. Her self-representation in the text is uh, honest, open, candid, but also she has this selfly, uh, slightly self-deprecating, excuse me, uh, aspect to it in that she also appears willing to um, kind of look at herself maybe with a bit of detachment and not see herself too seriously. Okay, um, right, as for the actual analysis, uh, I've provided a detailed uh, guided annotation for you. Uh, yes, I've written it in Comic Sans. You'll have to look at the next clip for this annotation because it will take uh, some while. Um, before you look at the guided annotation, make sure that you have read the text yourself. Um, do not um, do not just attempt the annotation without actually first looking at the text. Um, you should read the text, you should uh, annotate uh, features that you can find, and then you'll be able to compare them to the things that I've identified in them. So check the next video in this series uh, as the full guided annotation will take you through this text step by step.